The observatory falls naturally into four primary science subsystems, um, each of which has a TLA, that's a three-letter th three letter acronym, except for the last one. Um, uh, the, the, the first uh, science subsystem is what we call the fundamental sentinel unit, which is basically the suite of measurements that are made by human observers or samplers. So these are, the, these are really the heart of the program in some sense. These are measurements of plants, soil microorganisms, small mammals, uh, mosquitoes, and beetles, where people go to the field, uh, collect samples, and return them to the lab for uh, analysis. Uh, chemical, isotopic, genomic analyses, taxonomic analyses, to produce a huge reservoir of biological information. The fundamental instrument unit is the collection of sensor-based measurements that largely provide the physical and chemical context for the biological measurements. So this includes uh, basic uh, and sophisticated meteorological measurements, temperature, rainfall, but also ozone, reactive nitrogen, incoming solar radiation, um, and uh, some key aquatic and soil measurements, temperature, moisture, dissolved oxygen, root growth by uh, image, uh, video imaging, and so on. And the, the FIU includes instruments that are tower-based, instruments that are installed in the soil profile or in the water column in streams and lakes. The airborne observing package is, uh, should really be plural, not singular. We'll be building three airborne systems each system will be identical, and each system will include an airborne imaging spectrometer, a waveform LIDAR that measures not only topography, but also the three-dimensional structure of the plant canopy, and a high-resolution uh, camera, panchromatic camera for essentially context. The three packages will be mounted on aircraft. Two of those aircraft will essentially survey each of the 62 NEON sites in a complex annual program. The third is available for PI requests, targets of opportunity, follow up on extreme events like uh, landslides or earthquakes or hurricanes, and uh, you know, essentially a, a, a more principal investigator driven research program. And finally, the uh, land use analysis package is a software environment that integrates the NEON site and airborne data with a wide variety of continental scale national geospatial data sets, including gridded meteorology, soils, uh, impervious surfaces, roads and power lines, population density, income, and a, a wide variety of other physical, uh, uh, biological, and human attributes that in some way or another affect the functioning of living systems, directly or indirectly. Just to go through this a little bit more, the fundamental sentinel unit makes measurements of a wide variety of aspects of biology, diversity, population dynamics, uh, carbon uptake, productivity, phenology. Uh, we're monitoring infectious diseases that are carried by either mosquitoes or small mammals, uh, making a wide variety of biogeochemical measurements. Using modern genomic techniques, we're going to be observing microbial diversity and function and we're making a wide variety of hydrologic measurements uh, as part of the overall package. And this is the sort of layout. This is the Desert Southwest site. It's the, uh, it's the um, San Juan, uh, Santa Rita Experimental Range just south of Tucson. So it's, in a, it's on a desert landscape. Um, you can see mountains to the right uh, grading gently into, into uh, level desert to the left. And this site includes um, what looks like a, bit, a little bit of an oil derrick. That's the core meteorological observations up in the northern sector. And then the red freckles are basically the plots on which this spectrum of biological measurements will be made by human observers and samplers. Now, the, the sites also typically include an aquatic component uh, in which a wide variety of, of, of stream chemical, physical, and biological measurements are made. And at a subset of the sites, uh, there'll also be a manipulative experiment where two reaches of the stream are identified 
the upstream reach serves as the control. The downstream reach uh, will be amended with five times the limiting nutrient, either nitrogen or phosphorus, with the other nutrient added uh, in, in uh, stoichiometric ratio so that you're, we're, we'll be uh, observing, if you will, experimentally the impacts of long-term eutrophication on, on stream function. And that experiment also has a, a fish exclusion component. So there are electrified baskets in each reach where top predators are removed uh, as well. The fundamental instrument unit, as I mentioned, it includes physical and, and chemical climate effects, uh, a few ecosystem responses, water exchange, carbon exchange. Uh, most of the sensors are automated. Um, they include soil, aquatic, and atmospheric measurements. And, you know, considering the distribution of measurements with height on the tower, with depth in the soil or water, there are over 2,000 measurements made at each site at frequencies ranging from about a tenth of a hertz to 20 hertz. And all of that data uh, is captured uh, and will be archived in the information system. The airborne remote sensing system includes, as I said, a, an imaging spectrometer. Uh, the first one of these is being built by the Jet Propulsion Lab. Um, it's a visible near-infrared uh, spectrometer with 10 nanometer resolution for about 450 uh, to 2,500 nanometers. It's a very uh, advanced instrument uh, in terms of its performance, but at the same time, it's being developed to allow for an extremely robust field season running from about March uh, through October of each year and uh, being in operation almost for that entire period. The LIDAR altimetry will use waveform LIDAR, so it will record the full waveform return of the LIDAR pulse it will be flown in an imaging mode so that it's a contiguous set of pulses rather than samples of the landscape so that it produces, as you can see over there on the right, a true three-dimensional return of the vegetated canopy. Um, this is a commercial off-the-shelf instrument with uh, some essentially custom uh, data processing. And then finally, we'll include a high-resolution digital camera um, with about three times the resolution of the, of the imager and the LIDAR, basically to provide a kind of a land use context for the quantitative data. The plan is to fly these instruments on uh, twin otter aircraft. They'll fly at about 1,000 meters and 100 knots. That's the performance required for the contiguous imaging operation of the LIDAR. And uh, um, again, as I said, these, these aircraft will will uh, survey all of the NEON sites each year with additional capacity for uh, PI requests. The land use analysis package, as I said, this is a software analysis, continental cover, um, and most of the data sets included in this are essentially uh, fairly widely available data sets in the NEON information system, they'll all be available in one coordinate system, one spatial resolution, one set of file formats, and so on, just to make it easier for our internal data processing and for users uh, to have access to these common data sets. We're spending about a fifth of the total NEON budget on computing data and cyber infrastructure. Um, the, the system is fairly complex. It's about 70% commercial software, very different from the typical mode of development of large science software systems. Um, it includes the capability to, uh, to take in a, a wide variety of heterogeneous data input streams from continuous sensors, from researchers in the field who might be uploading data uh, from a handheld device from remote laboratories that are doing uh, chemical or isotopic or genomic analyses and then uploading the, the instrumental uh, measurements to the information system. All of those will flow through a, a private uh, network um, into the NEON information system where those data are uh, captured, archived, cataloged, and formatted. And then, as I mentioned, uh, there'll be a data processing pipeline so on an operational uh, basis, these data will flow through a series of initially uh, low-level algorithms, for example, calibration 
uh, or rectification into physically or biologically meaningful units, and then through more complex algorithms to produce high-level data products. And there are a wide variety of other functions that support the internal and external scientific staff in terms of doing QA, QC, uh, identifying instrument failures, um, and targeting uh, field situations for either surveillance or maintenance. So the overall uh, infrastructure is designed around high availability, no data loss. The system is all about collecting data. And so the architecture is designed to really uh, reduce the probability of data loss to the absolute lowest possible level. And 30 years sustainability. So this is a system that we want to put in place. And we don't, for example, want to rely on uh, a faculty member's research program to continue uh, software updates for the next three decades. Again, it, it led us largely to a commercial off-the-shelf or open source set of solutions to capitalize on, on commercial and federal investments for long-term sustainability of this system. It's a very industrial model. When you look at our software infrastructure, we look very much like a, 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 an advanced hospital information system or something like that. If, if you think about the analog hospitals, if they were really using advanced and, and modern information technology, are, are collecting information, everything from imagery to handwritten notes and processing that in an integrated way. And that's, that's kind of what our infrastructure looks like, except instead of, of uh, NMRs and, 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 and CAT scans, we have airborne imagers and canopy LIDARs. And finally, the data infrastructure is much more focused in terms of innovation on providing information to users rather than simply securing data and archiving it. And uh, because of that, we focus on complex algorithmic processing of data uh, and innovative informatics for publishing information and data to a wide variety of users. So most of the, of the uh, acquisition management and collection of data within the system is very boring commercial software. The, the algorithmic and data publishing aspects of it are much more interesting and, and advanced.